Hi, I'm Dr. Boyce Watkins from YourBlackWorld.com. Uh, this week you saw that President Obama has been uh, hit with quite a few scandals. Um, it, there, there's so many that it's hard to name them all, but uh, one of them involved um, the IRS allegedly targeting his political enemies. Another involves a, a potential cover-up uh, in Benghazi. Uh, there's, there's a scandal in the military where they found that the number of sexual assaults has uh, skyrocketed uh, over the last uh, several years uh, due to uh, gross negligence on the part of military leadership. And there, there's, just, there's just so much going on there. And I, um, and I didn't even mention everything. <laughs> That's not much is happening now. But uh, to, to try to understand what this means for the president, uh, you know, when you hear the Republicans saying, oh, we think we can impeach him over this, uh, I, I, want, I always try to go to people that I think can give us an objective opinion, who understand what the hell they're talking about. And the person at the top of my list is Dr. Wilmer Leon. Uh, he's the host of Inside the Issues with Wilmer Leon um, on Sirius XM. The power. Uh, he also is a professor of political science at Howard University, and I have Dr. Leon on the line. How are you doing today, brother? I'm doing great, uh, boys. And yourself? I'm doing very well. I'm very, very well. And you know what's funny is I listed three scandals, and I think there's a fourth. Do you know what the fourth one is that I didn't mention? Well, I think at least in terms of uh, my count, you've got the IRS targeting the Tea Party. You have the Associated Press. Uh, you have the administration. I, I, did, I, didn't, I, didn't, I didn't mention the Associated Press. That's the one where okay. they uh, they went into the emails of the Associated Press to investigate a leak, which has people fired up over violations of freedom of the press. That was the fourth one that I didn't mention. I think okay. I, I think I got the rest. <laughs> so, so well, I, I think the TV show scandal. They just need to turn it into a reality TV series starring President Barack Obama right now. I mean, what what's going on, brother? I mean, how serious? Are these allegations? I mean, is this going to pick up steam, or what, what are your thoughts on this? Well, I, I think a lot of this is really more of an annoyance, and it's really more background noise than it is really substantive, impeachable, uh, you know, high crimes and misdemeanors. But I think what this really shows, first of all, is management style and lack of management. And what I mean by that is, each administration, each president has a management style based upon their background, based upon their expertise, based upon their personality. So, for example, President Dwight Eisenhower, before he became president, he was a general. So his management style was a bottom-up military style hierarchy. Uh, you know, privates did not talk to generals. So things made their way up to the president through a hierarchical reporting mechanism. Lyndon Johnson, having been a member of Congress, having been a senator, and then being vice president before he was president, Lyndon Johnson had a, you know, Lyndon Johnson was a very hands-on. He understood the relationships. He had developed relationships within Congress, within the Senate. So Lyndon Johnson was able to pick up the telephone, and, you know, just basically get in somebody's butt and tell them what he wanted done and how he wanted it done. Bill Clinton was a very hands-on president, brilliant guy, very detail-oriented, understood the, the particulars and the dynamics within issues. And so he was very engaged and had no problem reaching out to a subject matter expert and telling them, you know, hey, tell me what you think. This is what I think. Let's go ahead and get something done. President Obama really seems to be managing the White House the way that I would manage one of my clients, as though it's some kind of, a, um, you know, project that you send different groups off to figure out. And, and, and so there really seems to be a disconnect between President Obama and a lot of his uh, cabinet secretaries. You know, so to hear him say, I did not know about the AP scandal. I heard about it by reading the paper. I did not know about the IRS issue. I heard about that the same way you did, by watching the news. You know, on one level, you can understand that because your president isn't involved in every detail of every agency that his administration oversees. But at the same time, as a citizen, you get a little concerned 
when every time a major issue presents itself, the first thing the president says is, oh, I didn't know about that. I heard about it the same way you did. So that, that to me, from a management perspective, is a bit frightening. Mm. Well, now, that, I, 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 that, was, that was a long-winded answer, but, <laughs> but well, I, no, think, no, that, I think that, it's important, that's what first we want. of all, to understand it from that perspective. Okay, so you know, I, I first of all, don't worry about the answer being too long. Uh, you know, I think that's what people need to hear. I think people need to understand, you know, what's going on and why it's happening. So, you know, when I hear the Republicans talking, they're using the I word. The, you know, they're talking about impeachment. Uh, how seriously should I take that? I mean, are they? Well, what are they trying to do? What, what are they trying to do right now? What they're trying to do is they're trying to kick up as much dust as they possibly can so that they can cloud the issues for as long as they can so that they can get as little done as humanly possible. Wow. Yikes. That doesn't sound like it's very good for the country. (laughs) Oh, it's terrible for the country. And I'm waiting because, understand, when they talk about impeachment, what they have to do is find a high crime or misdemeanor. Now, when you look at the Constitution, high crime or misdemeanor is not defined. But understanding in general parlance what a high crime would be, mismanagement is not one of them. In terms of that, and and that, if you want to, we can kind of go by, go down these things one by one. So you want to pick one, and we'll go from there. Okay. Well, let's start with the AP scandal. Um, you know, from what I understand, uh, the, the Associated Press scandal. Okay. The uh, okay. You know, so, yeah, so so from what I understand, uh, there were leaks to the media uh, coming out of the administration. They investigated the leaks, and this involved going through some of the emails of, eight, of, of members of the Associated Press, which from what I understand is a violation of freedom of the press. Um, okay, what is your take on that scandal, and how far do you think that would go? Well, I don't, I don't see that it goes anywhere, primarily because what the administration did was they got subpoenas in order to check phone records. To get a subpoena, you have to go to a judge. And so the administration would seem then to have followed legal protocol and followed legal practice they went to a judge, they got a subpoena from a judge, and they then investigated the individuals that they wanted to investigate. So I don't under, now that on one hand can be frightening to the American public, and it would make us wonder whether or not the administration, um, is 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 doing things that, from a democratic perspective, we ne- we might not want it to do, but in terms of violating the law, they went to the judge. The judge asked them to present why they would need a subpoena. They obviously made a case that a judge would find plausible, and a subpoena was granted. I don't understand where there's a violation of law. Okay, so so why is the Associated Press? all up in arms over this. I mean, was this because the subpoena was kind of done behind closed doors and they feel that their their, their liberties were, were kind of jeopardized? Um, or what, what's, what's their sticking point on this? Well, the issue here really seems to be that, you know, as with uh, Judith Miller, okay, um, well, let, let me say this. There is, there, is a, 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 there is a perception here that I think is an accurate. And the perception is that there is a protection for uh, journalists of their sources. There is a protection in state law, but there is not a protection in federal law. So, and the basis of the administration's case to a judge was national security. So, um on one hand, again, it seems as though the administration followed the law in getting their uh, getting their um, subpoena. The AP is concerned, as they should be, that the administration is trying to pressure journalists and pr- 
threat and scare people who would be sources in terms of uh, by, by the by the by the investigation that the Justice Department engaged in, which is why, um, which is why Senator uh, Senator Chuck Schumer and former Senator Arlen Specter uh, uh, introduced legislation back in 2009 from a federal level to shield journalists to pre- to prevent them from being compelled to reveal their sources under the threat of jail time. The issue here for me really seems to be the, administ- the president now saying, on one hand, that he supports the shield law. But when you look at what the administration is really asking, they're not really supporting the shield law because they're, they're say- they wanted exem- exemptions. They want to water down the bill by asking judges to defer to uh, the president's claim that a uh, um, that an individual will not be protected. Hmm. Okay. Gotcha. So, so, so they're not. So they're not. They're not really. The president isn't backing the shield law as he says he is. On the surface, he's saying. Yes, I want a shield law, but he's gone and asked them to water it down by asking judges to defer to the president when the president says, I need this information because of national security. Okay, got you. So, well, let me ask you this. Um, You know, on the surface, based on what you know about these different scandals, um, which one do you think is the most serious for the administration and, and, and why is it the most serious? Well, the one that I the one that I think is the most serious for the administration. Well, when you say that in terms of causing them potential harm, yeah, potential harm. I don't honestly think that at the end of the day, any of these things are really harmful to the administration, and, and from, you know, from an impeachment perspective, because if, if you look at the IRS so-called scandal, the IRS was really doing the job. That you, that the IRS is supposed to do when private interests apply for a 501c4 designation, the IRS is supposed to check to be sure that that organization or that individual that's seeking that designation is acting for social benefit, not acting in political interest. Now, what the IRS did, they made a mistake in terms of the deluge, the number of requests that they received, they tried to manage this by kind of triaging all of the requests that they got, and they and they used some narrow terms in order to kind of get their arms around the number of requests that they got. And so they used terms like Tea Party and Patriot and some other uh, uh, some other words to classify these things, and so that was a mistake. That wasn't any real, uh, uh, real legal uh, uh, threat to uh, political interests, as the as as Daryl Issa and other conservatives are making it out to be. It was just a mistake. And at the end of the day, when all of this is said and done, when you look at the IRS and what they did. It's going to come out to be an error. It's not really some um, witch hunt or or some uh, administration attacking its political adversaries the way that J. Edgar Hoover did or the way that the IRS did as it related to the NAACP. This is not the same thing. Interesting. Oh, okay. the, 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 main, the real the real scandal, if it is, if you can call it such. But, but nobody's talking about it in this context, is the Benghazi issue. And the Benghazi issue is a problem, not because of the talking point. What really we need to be asking ourselves is why did the United States go in and overthrow Muammar Gaddafi in the first place? That's the real question. But nobody wants to talk about it at that level. They want to they want to just stay stuck on stupid and focused on the talking point. When at the end of the day, what you find out 
is that this wasn't the administration changing talking points for political advantage. This was really more of an internal government debate within the CIA between uh, Director Petraeus and, uh, and, and, and one of his um, subordinates, I'm trying to get them, uh, a man whose last name is uh, Morrell, within the CIA, they were trying to figure out how they wanted to describe the, um, the attack in Benghazi. And then it was also a debate between the CIA and the State Department. Mm. It, it was, it was, it, it was uh, uh, intergovernmental agencies trying to figure out how they were going to describe this atrocity to the American people. It wasn't the administration trying to pressure uh, or, or, or come up with a politically expedient um, uh, presentation during an election year that the way that the Republicans are trying to spin this. All evidence seems to appear as though that's not the way this went down. But all of that is covering what is really the issue. Why did we do this in the first place? That's, that's what really needs to be said. Wow. Well, you know, it, it sounds to me like, uh, as you mentioned, the Obama administration uh, is, is kind of being being poked at by the Republicans who who are putting their own interests ahead of the interests of the country. Uh, but then again, Democrats seem to do the same thing on many occasions. And also it seems that, that the American people need to be asking deeper questions than the, one we're, the ones we're asking right now. Um, now, the last question I have for you, Dr. Leon, is, is this. Um, you know, one consistent theme that I've been hearing on various uh, platforms is that there is a deep concern with the Obama administration's lack of um, lack of protection, lack of support for uh, basic American civil liberties, uh, American yes. freedoms that that you know we're sort of putting security ahead of liberty in almost every context. Uh, is that the way you would define this administration? Oh, absolutely. And we talked about this before. Benjamin Franklin said, "Those who will sacrifice security for liberty deserve neither." So when you, for example, when you look at the uh, when you look at the AP issue, the Associated Press issue, and and uh, that to a certain degree, think about one of the first things that President Obama did back in 2008 was he he exempted AT and T and other telecom companies from um, from prosecution as they were involved with the Bush administration in facilitating warrantless wiretaps. That's see, that's a that's something as it relates to the AP story, that's a question that people need to be asking themselves. Not getting so caught up in the AP issue as the bigger picture, why would a president who talked about full disclosure and who railed against practices of the Bush administration, why would he be engaged in the same types of protection and uh, of, of, of a telecommunications company against the best interests of the American people? See, that's the bigger question that has to be asked. Well, again, when you go to the, to the Benghazi issue, the question isn't talking points. The question is, why would a president uh, circumvent the, the, the Congress, because if Congress has the authority to declare war, and go ahead and provide cover for the assassination of a sovereign uh, leader such as Muammar Gaddafi? That's the question that needs to be asked. The, the American people need to be asking themselves, about this consistent use of drones, which are actually making us less secure, not more secure. Why would a attorney general come to the American people and say that the American president has the authority to assassinate American citizens without judicial review anywhere in the world? That's the question that has to be asked. They need to be asking themselves about um, the 2012 Defense Authorization Act and why a president would be asking uh, for for authority to uh, have the Army detain American citizens, indefinitely detain American citizens, 
on U.S. soil. Those are the types of civil liberty um, intrusion that the American people should be concerned about, not not this background noise about the IRS, the the AP subpoena, and 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 Benghazi talking points. Mm. Wow. Well, you know, Dr. Leon, as usual, I certainly appreciate you giving people the straight story. Um, you know, the people that we want at Your Black World are people who want to think for themselves, who want to find the truth no matter where it is, um, not a, a truth that simply says that they want to be cheerleaders for President Obama, that they want to be enemies of President Obama unconditionally. I think it's a matter of finding out what his administration is doing, right or wrong, and and, and judging it from where where it lies. So so uh, I really appreciate uh, you taking that time to help uh, support and educate the public in, in their quest to, to get this information. Thank you very much. As always, uh, Dr. Watkins, I'm, I'm humbled whenever you call, and uh, I appreciate the, the opportunity to, uh, once again, dialogue with uh, your incredibly intelligent, uh, intelligent audience. Thank you, my brother. Oh, thank you, man. Thank you. And and by the way, I, I want to make sure uh, you, your show, uh, Inside the Issues with Woman Leon, comes on Sirius XM, The Power. Can you give me the dial and, and the time again so I can make sure I get it sure. right? The, the channel has changed. Uh, we've recently moved over to Channel 110. So we're on Sirius XM, Channel 110, from 11 a.m. to 2 p.m. Eastern Time on Saturday. And it's replayed on Sunday from 9 a.m. to 12. I'm oh, sorry, from 12 from 12 p.m. to 3 p.m. Eastern Time. Okay. All right. Uh, well, everybody, this is Dr. Warman Leon, uh, a political science professor at Howard University. Uh, and I want to say thank you to those who are listening for checking us out at Your Black World. And until we meet again, please stay strong, be blessed, and be educated. We are gone.